There it is. It's a wonderful day here in the KFUG studio. I am Jacques Kepner, and you're listening to Jacques Talks here from lovely Crescent City, California. It's a beautiful day. Uh, we are at 101.1 FM on your radio dial, or you can find more about us and listen to us online streaming uh, by going to kfugradio.org. Like I said, Hey, do you hear that? That is too cool. That's on one of the crows, pardon me, the roosters crowing in the backyard here at Fugland, which we love. It's a great place. It's got good vibes all the way around. There's dogs barking, cars driving by. It's a com- it's a it's a commercial studio, a studio with uh, a lot of commerce going on outside. So there'll be people coming in and out of the door. This is great, and that's fine. I want to also thank uh, KZZH out of Eureka, California, another community radio station. And they are carrying shop tops. And I'm quite proud of that. That's good. And we're getting some listenership, garnering it as time goes by and more and more people are turned on to what's going on. I also understand that they are carrying Paul Kurtz's program, Health Matter, in which he talks with uh, health matters of the day. And so thank you. KZZH in lovely Eureka, California. It is not even windy. I haven't felt any wind. I got to go up to Brookings a little bit later today, Brookings, Oregon, and we'll see how that, uh, how nice it is up there. It usually is a little bit warmer, but it's a hard day to beat here in the northernmost California coastal region of Crescent City, Smith River, Eureka, everywhere up here is totally cool, laid back, and happy. All right. I have uh, been gone, as most of you know, for, oh, collectively over well over a month. Uh, traveled to Germany and then have done some extensive traveling, uh, business traveling throughout the United States. And I'm back. I can't wait. I had that last week was like my, I got, I think I got home Tuesday night before the last week's show, live show here on uh, KFUG. And I was relieved then, but now after a week of contemplating what home is all about and feeling how good it feels to be home, I I can't say enough about how much I love this area and how good home feels no matter where home is to you. I am 66 years old. I avoid big cities these days. Um, I was born and raised in the city of San Francisco, and I no longer have the desire to go to any big city um, in the United States or elsewhere. I had such a great time in Germany with my dear companion and partner, Dr. Gigi, who many of you know from Doc and Jacques' show up at KCIW in Brookings, which happens later this afternoon. And we traveled to her homeland, and uh, I would say the best times were those in the small, quaint towns, traveling about, enjoying our time in those environments where there wasn't the big hustle and bustle. My least liked parts of that trip, and there weren't many, um, and I really didn't dislike them. It was just different, was going to the crowded cities of uh, Freiburg, Germany, and Strasbourg, uh, France, which was right across the border from where Gigi grew up. And those are big towns and bustling economies and lots of people. And uh, there were quite a lot of, uh, quite, a, quite a lot of confusion and action going on there that wasn't so much fun. It was those times that we had, um, that we had, uh, trying to clo- turn up my phone as I'm speaking here. Uh, it was those times when we were not in those cities that we had our best time. And so that's what I would put as my reflections on a great trip to uh, Germany. And now passing back through the United States has been a different experience. Uh, again, avoiding all the cities, I drove this time back to the Midwest, uh, Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, Utah, Colorado. I mean, I went through the whole strand, Nebraska and Wyoming, southern Wyoming, an eight-hour drive. In Nevada, another six-hour drive. My guest is shaking his head. He knows this, too. 
Uh, it was a little bit, it was an experience. Uh, but again, I avoided the big cities. I don't know what I'm really going off and talking about that other than to say that I love this place. I love this little coastal niche, this little coastal area that we call home and uh, northernmost California and southern Oregon. All right. I have in the studio today a returning guest that uh, is a very interesting guy. Uh, it's all I can say about him. He's just he's just an interesting character. Uh, before I knew him, uh, and I did not know that he owned an anchor that anchor and sales uh, tattoo shop on Third Street in downtown Crescent City. I saw him as a very eccentric, one of a kind, true. I'm going to just say he was a true character. Um, he was always actively promoting outside, not local, musical acts and venues. And then he'd bring them into our area, and he had a nest for them to land at Enoteca Restaurant and Bar. Uh, his good friend, Daryl Winkleman, has a penchant for these bands and, uh, and has a venue and a nest, a, a stage for these artists to showcase themselves. And he brought in these outside, not Todd Bill, but on their way up, different acts and music sound that was contrasting to what we have here in our local uh, local area. We all know our local bands. We love our local bands. They're good people. They, uh, they perform day in, day out, and they are always at many venues. And so it's wonderful to have that. We all know them by first names. Uh, I'm thinking of Disturbing the Peace, I'm thinking of Mighty Steelheads, I'm thinking of Bloodline, I'm thinking of of so many of these, The Way Outs, I'm thinking of so many of these uh, bands and others that are local and make their, uh, made their mark on our local area. But then, all of a sudden, he brings in these bizarre, I would say, totally different, uh, decidingly exotic, Bands and some of them uh, just recently. This rusty, uh, velvet voice guy named Ezra was in town, and it blew my mind when I heard him uh, performing just between the break of Bloodline playing last uh, Saturday night, or was it Friday night at Enoteca? He's brought in Hippie Death Cult, which right there and alone is something that's like, wait a minute, what's the Hippie Death Cult all about? He brought in Spirit Mother. A mother another kind of intrinsically interesting name, and so many, many more individuals and acts that he has discovered. And so we're going to find out more about him, and his name is Jeremy Jensen. Welcome back, Jeremy, to the show, K-Fugs, uh, the Jacques Talks. Thank you, Jacques. It's good to be back. Let me see. Did I say that again? Thank you, Jacques. It's good to be back. <laughs> I forgot your microphone was turned on. There we go. That's okay. Mine was turned on. All right, man. We have... We have, again, I didn't know that you were the owner of Ackerson and uh, Sales Tattoo Shop on 3rd Street. How long do you own that shop? Uh, we just had our third year anniversary. We're coming up on our fourth fourth year anniversary this uh, fall. Okay. So fourth year, you, yeah. had a little, you had a little gathering. And you had, uh, I remember that when that went down. Um, and yet you are such an... A, a, a mainstay at Enoteca. Every time I've been to Enoteca, yeah, you're there. And then you got into promoting these uh, these esoteric, unique, completely cool, growing. I, I'm going to say they're going to be extremely popular bands one yeah. day uh, that are on the up and coming, up and coming bands. How how do you discover these acts? Well, where do you? I mean, you get on the internet? Or are you out? No, but um. I, it all started when I was living down in South Lake Tavo. Uh, my uh, friend was starting out in music, and she wanted to get more recognition and whatnot. So I decided to just go for it to start booking bands. And the first band I ever uh, booked was uh, it was one of my best friend Parker Griggs. Uh, his band looked Radio Moscow, which at that time was the like number one band in the uh psych blue psych rock scene for uh like my i saw them down in or i saw their uh them playing at the 
Perfect hitter. Yeah. And yeah. Big, big band that's up and coming. So you booked them or you? Yeah, I booked, I had booked them. That was the first band and then it went really well. And, um, just, uh, had, this is now a good friend of mine. His name is Lance Gordon. Goes by Matt Elk. Me does, uh, liquid, uh, lights. Uh, I like the old school with the, the oil and the watercolor. Does all the crazy, huh. the psychedelic stuff. He does it for, all the bands now, I mean, he's done stuff for Dead and Company, you name any kind of band in that genre. He's done lights for him, but uh, and I came good friends, and he was uh, working with a couple of different bands, so it just kind of just started steamrolling like that. And then um, we ended up moving out of South Lake Tahoe, so I took to the break from it, and I moved over here and uh, became really good friends with Daryl at Anateca and. Uh, she and I was talking about music and his love of music, my love of music, and I said, you know, I have a lot of good connections within the music industry, and I'd be willing to start start booking again. We can work something out and can do agreement, and then here we are. Okay, so you're finding these people. Let's say, okay, the most recent one. Let's bring Ezra. He was in here this last week. It was. Um, Oh, let's see. It's mid. He was here mid uh, June, as it is. Yeah, he was Juneteenth today. Fourteenth. Okay, yep. and he played Friday night. Yeah, and then Saturday he played uh, Bloodline was there, and he played during the intermission. And everybody had been telling me this guy is like phenomenal. Yeah, he's silky voiced. He's single. He's a. He's just a solo player. He plays his guitar and sings. And he reminisces of uh, um, Ed Sheeran, not Ed Sheeran, Sheeran but. Like Dylan, and I was hearing these kind of names bounced around, and I thought, "Whoa, John Mayer!" Yeah, yeah, he definitely his, his voice is very uh, John Mayerish or uh, Dave Matthews ish. Yeah, did I not? Is not vibe? Yeah, he, oh, he's a phenomenal. He's young. He's twenty. Like he, he'll be twenty-seven. This tall, skinny, long hair, yep. cap on his head, playing the guitars without ever looking at his fingers. Were there? Just playing his guitar, and then that. It's just like that. I mean, he just had that, that kind of rusky, velvety voice. That yeah, is so, so cool. I was spellbound by him. And that's when I looked over and saw you at the table cross. We both gave each other a high five. And then we listened to it for a little bit longer. Then uh, Bloodline came back on, and you uh, didn't give him a big hand for Ezra. So where's he from? Um, San Diego. He's from Utah, but now he's living down in uh, San Diego. Up, I should have known he's from Utah originally. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, with well, the name from... Ezra, maybe you're right. Yeah. Yeah. His real name's Jaron. Um, uh, Jaron Yancey, but he goes as is yeah. Ezra. As in the uh, stage name. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I met Jaron. Um, I had a lot of connections out in Salt Lake City, too. I did music and stuff. Um, he was uh, the, excuse me, he was the uh, uh, backup guitarist for my buddy Parker's new band, um, El Perro. El Perro? They're coming, aren't they? Or have uh, they been here? Next year, yeah. they're over, uh, they're heading to Europe here next month. Care, like, I've heard about them a month and a half, two months, you know, they're touring. Um, but uh, he was he was with them for a while, and that's how I met him. And uh, yeah, so he started doing this. So I'm taking him. And this was his first uh, like official tour. Right on. Now, when these guys come into town, do you love do you love crash at your house? Yeah, yeah, I figured yeah, that. Uh, you got a nice house. Yeah, we're in the town. House over the, the beach. Like back of the, the whole back of the house is set up to, cool. to host bands or friends. Yeah, that always helps for the bands. I mean, yeah, especially now when it's two or three hundred bucks a room for El Piro, and it's it's a it's a godsend on the you know, I have to spend an extra a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, in hotel rooms for the bandmates, right? Everybody, yeah, that saves so much. That works out good. You're so cool, man. I mean, you're got a great personality. You're number one. You really do. And I'm back here. You do. You got a mellow. You're kickback. You're like, hey, accommodating. We'll we'll, we'll take care of it. I can see it. Dan, uh, Daryl is kind of the silent guy in a way. Once you get to know him, he could talk, right? Yeah, yeah. But he's got such a platform that plays an important part in this because he gives the venue. He gives the nest for yeah, them to land exactly. and showcase their talents. And he's even really to open up those nights that are not typical. It was a death, hippie death cult that came by the first time I saw them. Yeah. It was like a, they came on Thursday night Thursday or something. Night, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's nice. And it's, it's 
like when you're out touring and stuff, it's that's the hard ones. Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, they're the hardest. The fill in, yeah, fill in. How everybody wants to show on the weekend, right on. But, and, uh, and we're way up here in the we are, yeah. But it's nice because we're perfectly right in between like uh, Portland, Eugene. Uh, yeah, no, that's Sacramento, right. So they think comes hours each way. Terms of when they're on tour, you know, it's a nice little stopping point. To bad Medford's not I'm got a bigger scene because Medford is perfectly yeah. stopped along the way. I've seen um, the Delta Bombers over there. Huh, this little venue. Uh, I think it's called like the U Haul or something like that. Uh, I don't know. But it was a cool little venue. They have it like upstairs or whatever, which kind of sucks for people that are uh, have disabilities and stuff. Oh, well, can you? But it's a nice, it's a nice venue. It's a big, uh, like ballroom up there, almost. And where, um, when they do come, do they usually stay for a night? Uh, Generally, yeah. Some, um, some, some have to hit the road. Like uh, with uh, Jay Ezra, there, he uh, he came, crashed out for like a couple hours, and had to hit the road at like five thirty in the morning to get down to Santa Cruz by three thirty for one other meeting show. Whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa. To real life, uh, it seems like it'd be, yeah. but uh, sometimes it's, it's not, you know, it's just the hustle and bustle. Go, 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 go. Okay, I mentioned the other band. There was, oh, oh, what was Spirit Mother? Spirit Mother, yeah. That's my uh, buddy Armand and um, Shaw and his wife, uh, Sarah Jane. And are they the folks from? Um, he and uh, all in, uh or well, that's not, not all. Sean, uh, Sean is uh, he's from the South of New York area, and they're their guitarist. Um, and his wife Armand and Sarah Jane, they live over uh, in northeastern Oregon. They have a nice little ranch out there. Interesting. Yeah, uh, and actually, Jaron had stayed with them when he was coming through or whatever. Who was the female uh, vocalist guitar player? Was that them? Oh, no, that was, uh, that's uh, Happy Death Bow. Happy Death Bow. Yeah, no, Oregon. Okay. Damn, she's amazing. Amazing, yeah. 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 And so uh, she's basically, she's like the leader, but she's, well, her yeah, boyfriend. Yeah, I'm saying here, uh, her dude is, um, you know, it was his brain project or whatever. He's been doing it for a while, and then and I believe that they get when. I don't know if they got together before or during the band or what. I don't quite know their yeah. history all that well. Um, I have been friends with them for about two years now. Uh, I met them through actually through Spirit Mother. They were they did a tour together, and then we met down in uh, Austin, Texas at um, interesting at uh, Ripple Fest, uh, which is awesome. You did hear under September. I didn't know you had connections in Utah until I posted that one thing on. Hey, Salt Lake City is the cleanest city in America. Oh, yeah. I wrote back. You got, yeah. dude, it's yeah. like one of the filthiest as far as EPA is concerned, right? Come with your uranium nice. dust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's suck it out. And I, I responded to you feebly. Well, I'm talking about no litter on the street. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't have much litter. It's pretty clean. No, it is, it is clean. And then people are really, genuinely, really nice. Yeah. Out there. You're yeah. more yeah. friends from all over up there, all the way up to like uh, Ogden. And down like Sudra City, Salt Lake area, Per City, that whole lake, huh? I got a good friend at Logan, Utah. I used to love Logan. That was a, one of my short spots to move to. But now, like every place else, it just keeps growing bigger. Yeah. And bigger and bigger. And then what's who's on the doorstep? Anybody out there? Does you know, Minnins? Um, next show is uh, the 10th, which is a Wednesday, Wednesday show. Um, and I'm so stoked out of these guys. I've been trying for two years to get them here, and I finally, uh, yeah, they hit me up, like, about a month ago now. Uh, what, is the, what is the band called? Daikaiju. They're, uh... Daikaiju. Yeah. They're, uh, Japanese, like, uh, mons, uh, like, industry, like, kind of like Godzilla. Headbanging music, or? No, it's, uh, psychedelic surf rock. They're... Psychedelic surf rock. Yeah. I dig that right off the bat. Yeah, like, they're amazing. If you, if you're, if that's your thing, it's kind of mushroom music or what? Oh, they... No, no, it's like it's your Dick Dale kind of stuff with that's... just like a psych twist, you know. Um, Ezra's, and they're Japanese. No, they're not. Uh, they're Japanese monster <laughs> themed. Like that's the kind of thing. Yeah, so it's got so, uh, they music, water, and all that. Or uh, Godzilla, yeah. 
God. Uh, then when are they coming into town? That will be July 10th. Friday, Saturday night. That's a Wednesday. A Wednesday night. I had a true Wednesday show us next month. Yeah. And what do you know? Back to back. Uh, so the 10th is uh, Daikaju. Um, and all these bands you can find on every streaming platform. Okay. Uh, there's that kind of Apple Music, Spotify, blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, so they're but, coming into Crescent City. Yeah. And their live show is amazing. The, you've been in my shop, have you not? Yep. Yeah, the the burnt guitar that I have mounted. Yep, on my wall there. That's from them. That uh-huh. they're the band that melted that. <laughs> uh, their their live show is just something else. Um, they all wear masks and uh-huh. undercover their identity and stuff. Not like slip, not kind of masks, but uh, like Japanese. We wear the deep. What a trip! What I must be burnt wearing. And then the following week we have back. Uh, uh, the band uh, Arm for Apocalypse. So Wednesday night, uh, July 10th. Yep. And then July 17th will be uh, Arm for Apocalypse. Uh, Arm for Apocalypse. It sounds like a heavy kind of spring. Yeah, they're really good. It's uh, really heavy. It's not that uh, screaming like uh, King Diamond cast test. It's, uh, it's very well uh, put together, very well thought out. Their music theory is amazing. They've, and they're just super nice guys. Right. Yeah. So if you're down in uh, Eureka out at KZZH listening to this, or you're up in Brookings at KCIW or beyond, think about coming down on any Friday night, Daryl uh, Winterman's in a tech yeah, restaurant free. bar. It's always free. Yeah. It's always a free. It's always good. Great. The biggest uh, selection of beer in. I, it, I'm not just cross. I mean, it's huge. They got 35 or 36 beers on tap now. That's more than any brewery. Yep. And. A wide variety of, of craft, and then the regulars, domestic, internationals. Yeah, the cider's. I tried their strawberry cider last week. It was really good. Dog beer cider, fag, do the heart. That, yeah, well, I try the strawberry. They yeah. always out of the blueberry, but the strawberries. Mala Doc liked it a lot. She said, "Oh, that's really good." Um, okay, so that's happening every Friday night. There's always an active venue at Daryl Winkleman's um, uh, Enoteca restaurant and bar, good food, good, great spirit, good, good, good vibe, great stage for the entertainers or yeah. to be on. We're, we're talking about expanding it out. They should expand some more room. Yeah, there you go. Fans, because when you get a like a five piece, you know, sure, for a power trio, they have to yeah. knock back into that bathroom, but they're right, go, you know, go play in the men's bathroom. yeah, they go and and but maybe pre- since every can is. Everything is equal nowadays. Every, you know, I, as I travel across the country, I saw more and more bathrooms, quote, bathrooms for just, you know, in there. It's like everybody's good. Yeah. Thing, they, yeah. And then you got that. You've got uh, in a tech happening. You've got also the Port of Pines usually carries uh, bands on Friday and Saturday, sometimes both nights. I know that uh, Poplar Night in a tech is also there. Sure, be a night and this and yeah, night and sure anything else. else. Yeah. So it's, you can come on in. Somebody's poking in the, come on in. Okay, Lee, Paul, Paul is right back to the sack. We're still around the field. I'll be the checks. Um, yeah, I don't do any promotions. I know you don't. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but I, they just is another. So, so the yep. small town across the city does have that. Yeah, uh, exactly. ability that they have these smaller, uh, cool venues. I think you know, Tech, you know, Tech is just it's a, it's a, it's a great vibe. And again, it's every Friday night and on July tenth and seventeenth of this next month of July. You're going to get the opportunity to see two new moving on bands, moving up bands that are coming into town. You need things. So come on up from Eureka. Make it a day and an evening and might um, find out more by going to Enoteca. Daryl. Daryl's a great guy. He's, yeah. He's that food there, like you're saying, the food. Everything's good. Everything's good. He's just got a good vibe going there. Also, um, um, I, I think Crescent City is buying now for uh, Brookings. Brookings always has a, had a good vibe. Chepco Brewery, but they close early. They'll always have their acts from 6 to 8. Yeah, I'm now set. Like, when I moved here, like, uh, all, of, all the businesses, even the bars. Yeah. Breweries, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they uh, close it early. You know, I come from Wisconsin where you open up 2, 2 a.m. Right, every night. Right. Look, uh, officially yeah. until two, then you just carry it on the party. Oh, yeah, I can go. Yeah, you go to the after party. Right. But, uh, yeah. But, I mean, the, the whole town kind of shuts down with the exception of Safeway and I think Walmart's. I don't think 24 hours. 
Now they close off at 11 now. That's their national policy. I found that out driving across the country. All right, so you could find out more uh, by uh, checking into, there you go, listening to this. Is there a way people could contact you, Jeremy? Yeah. Um, they can reach me through Facebook, either my personal page, Jeremy Jensen. And that's J-E-N-S-E-N. Yes, right? S-E-N, yep. Danish on English. There you go. And, uh, or they can go to Beautiful Mind Productions. On um, Beautiful Mind Productions, okay. Yeah. Um, on Facebook. A Beautiful Mind Productions on Facebook or Jeremy Jensen. You could friend them. We're friends. He's always uh, uh, sending me a little note here and there, finding out what's going on. Okay, we are already halfway through the show, amazing enough. You are listening to KFUG. We are located in uh, Crescent City, California, here on a beautiful Juneteenth day, uh, 2024. It's sunny. It's bright. Very little wind. It's one of those wonderful days that we love to call Paradise Home here in the great Pacific Northwest. Um, our, we are on the dial. We are 101.1 FM, LP, and we are always having a good time in Fugland. We have to do a lot of these live shows in Fugland. Hats off to KFUG for getting that uh, out, the message out that people can, you can put up a good show here, live show. So many other commercial stations are just... And uh, I don't want to go live. I don't want to do this now. We just we're happy can canning everything. That's okay. It's to each his own. But something about KFUG and other stations that uh, are willing to say, "Hey, let's do it live. Let's put it out there. Let's give raw radio, real radio." All right, I'm back. Here we are in the studio with Jeremy Jensen, J E N S E N, and he is also besides being a music promoter and a music maverick. And a, a trippy guy. Uh, he's also the owner of Anchors and Sales Tattoo. What do you call it? Parlor shop? What do you, what's uh, Anchors and Sales uh, Tattoo, Piercing, and Hair? Okay. We do tattoos, piercings. Uh, I have a master barber, Angela Schneider. She's amazing. Is she a cosmetic artist? Is that what's on the front? No, she's, the, she's a master barber. Uh, she's a third, third generation barber. Uh, she's been doing it for... 30, 30 years, 30 plus years. Wow. Um, and then I have uh, uh, MJ is my uh, beautician, and she also does pedicures. Okay. Here's, I saw on the door a fairly new sign, or maybe I just noticed. Yeah, right on the front. Yeah, and it says right. cosmetic art, and I, I Dr. Gigi and I are parked up there, and we're looking at it and going, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what's going on with the, that new sign? And and Gigi speculated it's for the for like people like herself that like to have eyeliners tattooed, eyeliner permanent. No, sure. She doesn't do that. that. Um, yeah, cosmetic because I don't know why she called it cosmetic artist. It's it. Yeah, I think yes, she does like nails and stuff. Uh, maybe so beauticians <laughs> consider doing hair. It is an art. My mom. Yeah, yeah. Barber beautician. I mean, it's, right. It's, okay, so you got that both. You're you got the what do they call the things in your ears? The plugs, uh, yeah, the plugs. So mm-hmm. they keep getting bigger, bigger or not? Uh, this is as big as I'm gonna go. Uh, yeah, you get to a certain point. Not everybody has the same. Uh, what it is is the amount of space, obviously, and then the elasticity of your tissue. Yeah. Uh, if you go too big or whatever, you run the risk of tearing. Uh, and okay, no, you're you snug it up. But you uh, are always usually wearing a cap, and you always wear sunglasses. You and I wear sunglasses a lot. Yep. You got a goatee and a beard, always dressed in like a, a hip. I'm a hipster, man. I mean, totally cool dress. So you always got an open shirt, flowing pants, it's this and that, the other. Yes, sir. He's he's kicking back. He always makes an impression. You will know Jeremy Jensen when you see him. And where is your shop located? We are at 851 Third Street. Beautiful downtown. Yes, so you're, you're one of the more vibrant stores i mean enotech is there you got a bunch of banks yeah uh their new dispensary open up around the back side of yeah yeah really nice guys yeah i've great so i shouldn't you know finally went in and met them now they're bilingual it's cool yep yeah cool um uh, i have uh let's see what else is new what there's this mainstays there's the paragon coffee shop there's the uh, the oh, stage really? shop um she actually here we i teamed up with her and um she, uh, I get rid of the recipe and she makes all of her aftercare products. Yeah, uh, I just started my own line of uh, aftercare products for piercing and tattoos. Well, the Buffalo Bills. 
Lotion. It's called Buffalo Bills Lotion. Yeah, That's your, uh, your own stuff? The uh, Silence of Lambs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. It has a precious in a little wicker basket on the front for the logo. Right on. But yeah, it's all uh, organic and natural uh, products. How is the business? Oh, uh, good. Uh, the slow season this year, we always have a slow season, uh, was pretty, pretty slow. It was pretty killer. I mean, how many people live in Crest City? 8,000, 9,000, maybe? I mean, is it? Well, I know that they count the population at the prison. Oh, uh, the prison. <laughs> so, okay, maybe we have 10,000 if you counted 25 yeah. or so people that work up there. I'd say probably yeah, I mean, or live there at the prison, at Pelican Bay State Prison. Uh, what's your official title? You're just the owner? Is that what you say? I'm the no, owner and uh, head catch. Head and show. Head on show. The guy, he gets put up any art he wants, like burn guitars on the wall. And you came originally from Wisconsin? Um, well, yeah, originally I moved out to California, originally to uh, South Lake Cattle, where I worked at Lake Monster Tattoo for five years. That was coming out 16 years ago. Wow. All right, cool. What are your shop hours? When is the shop hour? Uh, we're open I mean, Tuesday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to uh, our new summer hours now. We're open till 6 p.m. or later. We try to accommodate. Um, they can schedule it by appointment. So you say there is busier days than others. Yeah, usually Tuesdays are pretty uh, heavy on the piercings uh, for some reason. Do you do a variety of stuff? You do piercing. You do. I do piercing and, and tattooing. Tattooing is my main. Okay, so we're going to get into that. I got a lot of questions for you, and I think a lot of our audience does too. Some of us are in the older uh, bracket of years, like myself. I'm 66. I know most of my friends are in their 60s and 70s. Uh, there's two schools that I belong to. Um, there's people like myself that have never had a tattoo. We grew up in the day when, hey, those other people had tattoos. Some people are out of bowling alleys, sit places oh, yeah, like yeah. that, right? They had a weird yeah. vibe to it, right? Uh, or possibly, then I then I would hear, oh, it's only prisoners got tattoos. But today it's evolved into this mainstream everywhere. Uh, it's it's accepted, totally different than it was when I was a kid. Um, I mean, you say business is good. What are people coming in for? The majority of people come in for tattoos, or are they come in for piercing. Okay, one of the two. One of uh, the- I would say it's probably about. Mm, 50 50 really okay um we do do a lot of piercings okay we are the only pierce in the studio from if we're all the way up in east bay down to in Eureka. and what does it take to pierce? do you have to have the license by the state yeah. of california yeah, yeah. You super restrictive well. yeah um, and not as not as bad as oregon i guess that's why i guess they're they make it really hard to get a, a license for piercing for some reason um, up there, and that's why there is a Monmoon Brookings. I guess years back there used to be somebody up there, but now nah, there's not. Um, but yeah, it's be license. I have to okay. The business has to be licensed, and then uh, individual contractor. What do you pierce? What body parts do you pierce? Mostly the the one I do the most would be the earlobes and uh, nostril. So okay, so a pierced ear. If I just wanted to have a little diamond put in my ear, uh-huh. right? I used to be able to go to Walmart and get it done for like you would buy the thing and it'd be twenty five bucks. The lady would do it right there and there. For yeah, they're uh, it's one that's they'll do some disgusting because they they don't sanitize anything. Uh, I don't believe they do anymore. I think they don't. They stopped it yeah. 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 Claire's was another popular one people used to go to, but yeah, they don't know what they're doing. Uh, half the time they're uh, put doing it crooked. I've seen it a million times where you know one's up here, one's down there. Right. Uh, yeah, out in there, they're using a a, a gun thing. You know? Yes, like the uh, same thing. Like if you've ever been out on a farm, and now they cow t- they do a tetragon. Yeah, they're so saying do that. Same okay. scenario, pretty much. So they're t- piercing with a, a blunt object, and it's not. Uh, they're. I had it done. I had a couple of years. I had it done. They were um, actually having a really sharp end, but then you have that really sharp end sticking out the back of your ear, and I'll poke in the neck or. You know, aside your head, you don't want that. I had it done, and then I uh, they they healed up. I mean, I wasn't told how long. I thought I could just take it off for a week or two, and they sealed up. Oh, yeah, no longer really quick. Oh, yeah, six eight weeks healing time with leaving the jewelry and stuff, where you can take it off for a little bit. But I mean, yeah, even if you had your ears pierced, you know, for a couple of years or whatever, you took them out and slept them out. 
within like a month or two, they'll, they'll close back up where you... Yeah, that's what happened. Get your peers, yeah. Time, I, was, I would be traveling. I had it done there. I think they were a little off. They were a little crooked, but... Um, all right, so it's different with you guys. So you just have super sharp needles. You have this. Yeah, it's a tri bevel needle, so it makes uh, three really uh, micro in, uh, lacerations. Do you, do you got some desensitizer skin? Oh uh, yeah, we uh, well we sat or the the uh, jewelry is is oh <laughs> sorry yeah it's sure. a soap and um, ninety nine. Point nine percent isopropyl alcohol that soaked in there for a while, um, for a couple minutes, and then we clean the area with with alcohol. Uh, so I could I could pinch on my earlobe right now. It's not a sensitive place. It's very sensitive. Not too bad. No. Yeah. I mean, I'm grabbing it right now, and I, I don't feel it. Okay. Where are where is the most common area on the human body that you are least you deal with for tattoos? Tattoos. Probably the arm. Like the, the upper deltoid area, it's a deltoid area. Okay. Shoulder. Still a common, common, that's supposed to, do most men get it there? Do women get it there? Men, men generally up there. Uh, women, uh, a lot of them either, it seems to be more of a hidden area. Either it's like a, a perfect back. Women, so women. I mean, yeah, a lot of times it's like on the back shoulder blade there or, um, like on the thigh or uh, do people want to do them for other people or for themselves or is it both combination uh i would say probably maybe 70 percent themselves 30 percent for somehow the memory else yeah see it all right here's a question for you uh piercing so we got back to piercing how about nose piercing is it in the between like a pig has a rim or a side of it. Yeah, it's it pretty popular. Nostril, either one of the nostrils or a double nostril is pretty. And that's usually just like my daughter has. She has just a single little diamond in the Yep. Middle. All right. Definitely what's the word. All right. How about lips? Quite a few of those. Uh, lately, snake bites and have been uh, pretty. So that must be so two together. Uh, it's one on each side here. It's huh. just slightly in from the crease of your Okay, that's ended or area. It's not too sensitive, maybe. No, it feels like you're like when you're. I'm sure you bit your lip once or twice throughout your life. Yeah, absolutely like that. Okay, how about uh, nipples? Back when I first started, you know, uh, doing piercings twenty years ago, um, there there was pretty common. It was like eyebrows, labrae. I forgot the eyebrow. Okay. Oh, yeah, that was common. Um, What's the Lembre? Is that uh, like right here? Go tink out of the guy in right through the saber. Oh, the flavor saber. Okay. Oh, tongues. Duh. Oh, yeah. That's so. Hold on. It's, it's a hit and mess. So it seems, I don't know. I guess tongue had a primary thing lately with it. Was it men and women that were getting tongue piercings or yeah, have, have both? Yeah. yeah. Okay, how about genitals? Is there any genital piercing at all? I, I did one spinning shucks probably like six months ago. It's not that very common. I've done the time that I've been here, the six years I've been here, uh, I've probably done maybe half dozen. But if they want it, if somebody really wants it, they can come in and say, yeah, men or women, doesn't matter. Okay, just come in and. Yeah, last one, six months ago was, was a male. Okay. Interesting. I don't know how I guess. I don't know. What? What? That word. Yeah. Leave the way they give them. Don't even circumcise it in his obvious dub dub. All right. So uh, back to peer, uh, to back. Okay. So I think we covered it. Piercings. Uh, cheeks. Uh, strange other places. Where else would people pierce them? I don't think there's. How about. No, they're. I guess you're not going to be piercing your toes or anything like that. Your fingers and the home. So we've covered it. It's pretty much on the head, on the face. And possibly the nipples and possibly plural. Uh, the genital. Sorry. Hey, hey there. All right. I can't hear you. are listening to K-Fug here live on this Wednesday, Juneteenth. All right. You know, back to the the uh, tattoos. Um, do you use natural or synthetic ink? What's the difference between the two? Uh, uh, that's a 
I said acrylic paints are like this. No, no. Um, back in the nineties, there were two companies, uh, Fantasia and, and uh, Starbright, who uh, were using yeah, like polymers, um, and it was happening. They'll put this stuff in your body, and it, we cracked down on the regulations as far as uh, these were synthetic, man-made. Yeah, they had the with it's like and microplastics in it. Um, and my buddy, uh, Reed Mather, that owns uh, Lake Monster Tattoo down in South Lake Taco, um, was getting some laser work on his chest, and he had that in there. When the laser, what laser does is it breaks up the pigmentation, and then it go, your body uh, rejects it, sends it through your lymph nodes and out through your. But because it was synthetic, because it was synthetic, the laser actually melted. Melted it under his skin. Well, it's like you, you can't, you can't get it out. Whoa, well, yeah. So speaking of laser, what about tattoo removal services? Do you ever do that or use over tat? Uh, no, just tattoo. Um, you need a special license for that. Uh, not for laser removal. You have to go through a course. I think it's like like six months or something like that. Maybe some expensive equipment. Yeah, uh, from what I gather, um, is that. Almost every clinic they uh, lease lease it because the the uh, technology is always increasing. Um, but now, yeah, it's very it's crazy. Hey, do you ever promote? Do you ever tattoo any of these visiting musicians that you host? Did you? Yeah, no, 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 definitely. I mean, uh, our last one I tattooed was uh, oh for when I when we had our third year anniversary at the. Uh, a great uh, desert legend, uh, Nick Oliveri, formerly of Nisa, Stone Angel, Kaitis. Bald who's gun? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I tattooed him with some of the little uh, evil and evil tattoo right on the backside of Zar. What I at? When you tattoo, are you drawing it, hand drawing it first? Okay, so I'm a total novice. So I'm going to pretend I answered my questions. It has just done maybe, I, I, we've already talked about possibly getting a fun, and I'll tell the audience about that in a minute. But I'm coming in your shop. Don't know anything about tattoo. Never had a tattoo. What? Do, so you're using natural inks. Yep. You're using a thing that kind of looks like an airbrush, but it has little tiny needles. Yeah, it's a uh, direct drive or a, a rotary uh, pen. Okay. And those could be kept sterilely clean. Yes. Everything has to be sterile clean. Um, the the cartridges that go in there are drawn away. Single so use. I do that. And same thing with the ends. It's on everything is thrown away. Okay. Um, yeah, and everything that you think is hard, sanitize the machine and stuff. It's actually a lot nicer as far as sanitation with the pens versus the uh, traditional. I assume you've done hundreds, if not thousands, of tattoos. Do you start with a template that you kind of like those yeah, fake you know, tattoos or something? You stick them? Yeah, in. back in the day, you used to do acetate stencils, uh, which is, you know, you take a piece of acetate and then you take like an engraver and you carve out the. Your, your line work, uh, your line patter, and then you would uh, put a thin layer of Vaseline or uh, like a deodorant or on the skin. You put the acetate over and then you spray both uh, the carbon. Uh, yeah, sure. So, I don't know. So, with that, I, back in the day, you had, you, you had to really know how to draw because sometimes you've wiped the, I mean, the line van was holding that stencil on. To the stand, it was that layer of Vaseline run it, so that's why they didn't really wipe that much, you know, and they were in a hurry. Um, so if you lost your stencil, you better today it's different. You have, yeah, um, today, uh, you can need well, a lot of people depending on what you're doing, like, um, most most of them are you're doing a, a stencil with a carbon copy paper, a Jensen paper, and uh, you're applying it with uh stencil okay. stencil stuff so it's just a million different brands now and then just getting to know how that machine like, like, works right through your, your stencil yeah and you definitely the pen itself yeah you gotta know what's going on there have there been great developments in the pen yeah um I uh, I've been tattooing as of June 2nd this is my uh, 22nd oh now I'm into my 23rd year um, it was my 22nd year of uh, tattooing and uh, I've always, up until three, 
I'm a sport guy. Yeah, about well, four years ago, I started. I just started making the transition over to to the to the rotary, which is more convenient. Uh, it's lighter. Uh, the coil machines are generally a little bit heavy, um, so it's quite flat out. So here is you, uh, perfect towel. No kidding. Weight. Yeah, uh, it's it's a whole another beast, and it's too different. It's you tattoo different in your application. Uh, it's different from from a pen to to the coils. Okay, so if I wanted to have the the four letters G I G I tattooed over my heart, would you shave my yes yeah. first, right? Yeah, so you shave shave the area, and then you clean it with the uh, spray it down some alcohol, wipe it down. Um, and then apply some stencil application cream. So I could pick out the font, I could pick out yeah, the style, the font, uh, the style, the size. Is it all like computer generated right then and there, or yeah, uh, either, either, yeah, done on like the iPad or I do it by hand and then prints it up and then you could make a stencil and then, uh, you know, show you want to copy or whatever, make sure you like it, kind of make a stencil. What's the largest tattoo you have personally ever done? Uh, back piece, like a, like a full back. Whoa! It took days. Oh yeah, hours, years. Yeah, multiple sessions. Um, ideally, you know, you want somebody in there every every month going at it because over time, you know, the uh, the holding will maybe start to fade, and then you have that that slight uh, shade difference. And the colors, and then you gotta go back over it. Right. And they get look stitched for cohesive. And, um, and it does what's the healing process like? Is it that's part of it, right? Is you've got to, yeah, you um, put in the skin. Yeah. Uh, technically or medically, it's considered a controlled abrasion. Uh, and, uh, the healing process, um, now there's been developments in that. Uh, there's the, uh, Second skin, as it's called, it's, uh, it was originally developed for like uh, burn victims healing. In terms of, um, it applies a protective, uh, sanit- sanitary uh, uh, layer protection over a, a wound or whatever. So we use that, leave that on there for five days, uh, take that off. And it's nice because, especially for uh, people getting their first, second tattoo, um, it eliminates the first part of the healing, and that's generally where people that don't take very good care of their tattoo um, during the healing process is where it got really messed up. Some people, uh, most commonly, it's people putting too much uh, ointment on, and it just kind of uh, water locks your your dermis. Wow! And uh, so that most turn it into mush. Um, so that eliminates that, and then by the time those five days, um, you take that bandage off, and you're through that first part, and then you're just washing it three times a day and applying with a small little bit of uh, balm or brush. I'm not. I'm gonna get. A, I'm thinking about that little wrist wristband. And you, I showed you that I had my wrist, and you said, "Oh, there's a bruise there. I still have this bruise. I swiped it. Yeah, I moved a bunch of some Missouri on us because it'll just the ink will just." Separate out like a wow, like drop enough to a drop of ink in a little water puddle. It's just still. So you tell the the client right in here, and you get oh, back, come, I, come I, back in a couple weeks. Totally honest with, with people, and I had to turn people away. Their skin is just your skin does have an expiration. Um, mm. When you get older, you know, I do uh, start losing the lipids in your in your skin, so it's skin starts to dry, flaky. And uh, it'll just break the parts, so kind of like uh, hitting rice paper. And if you were doing like water, I mean, yeah, and to add it too much water on it, yeah, it, it just spreads out. I and mean, you don't, I mean, I'm a nice crisp, and I'm not out to, I've been doing this long enough, and I, I, I'm blessed to live the life that I live, yeah. But I'm not out to take people's money if I, if it's, I, you know, it's your tattoo, but it's also my reputation, yeah. Uh, and I think which some people get upset. That when I tell them that I won't do it or we can't do it, it's just like yes, it is your tattoo, yes, it's your money, but it's just also my business. Right on. Okay, how old do you got to be to get a tattoo? In the state of California, eighteen years old. So a minor cannot get it, even with the parents. Um, so you got to check ID. Yes. 
we checked everybody's IV for piercing tattoos. Yep. And um, how is it evolving? Where is where is the tattoo going? Is it getting easier and better? Is it getting yeah? yeah. And, um, I don't know. When I first started out uh, with my apprenticeship in 1997, uh, the development and uh, I guess the imagery, like uh, the portrait realism, it's mind blowing. So it is that is uh books just like a a, a photograph someone uh, yeah you're right photograph it'd be us mind blowing but there's also bad tattoos out there oh it's still the world yeah, uh, oh it's parents i know your kid's a great artist don't buy them a amazon tattoo thing oh you might be a tattoo artist have them get a formal apprenticeship i've this heard so many kids with these janky homemade tattoo oh god my friend did it They're learning yeah we're learning they do it under heat somebody said Cause yeah i think about it right off yeah. your knee and they do it right there that's your first canter's tattoo on my thigh here uh it's just easier for like when you're tattooing yourself because it's a nice flat area yeah and you can your thigh you're just you can use hands because you need both hands you need to stretch stretch the skin as well all right i'll let you okay we have covered i think the gamut you got to be over 18 uh, he does everything. He does from cosmetic to uh, hair. Well, he has people that do a barber, and then he does extrem- extremely good. Go in and just walk into your gallery, and you get yeah. stuff all over the walls, right? You let yeah, the yeah, You look on this slash up there. I, my portfolio's out. Uh, uh, yeah, bring bring your own ideas or why not design? Uh, we accommodate everything. Cost is a fed. Uh, uh, shop minimum's a hundred dollars, and it goes up from there. Can okay. um, people always ask, "Is it by the piece or is it hourly?" Uh, the only time that we charge hourly if it's like a larger scale work, like an arm sleeve or a back piece or a chest bound, where it's multiple sessions and multiple right. hours. That's the only time it's there. But it usually it's by the piece. Like I said, the shop minimum's a hundred. We do have our special uh, little marquee board where. Uh, Oh, all the designs on there are worth, you know, anywhere from the potter to some, like, two, 200. But uh, you stand against the wall and you shoot it with the nerve gun. What you hit is what you get. That, and that's for 100 bucks. <laughs> yep. Got it. How many uh, artists, how many people do you employ? Um, they're all independent contractors. Yeah, good. Um, but uh, I have Brie Ellis, who just won the silver for the uh, triplicate. Oh, yes. Oh, really? Yep. Finished out. Yep. Yep. Really proud of her. She was my uh, first apprentice. Could, uh, she really picked the, picked things up way faster than I thought she would. She's just, she's just a very talented woman all around. Definitely. Seeing ladies getting into this, too. That's great. Yeah. Um, so I have, have her. And the old, uh, there's Angela, the hairdresser, or the barber, MD, the hairdresser. And then I have... Uh, Dave Carlos, who's my newest apprentice, and for tattooing, and then I have uh, Justin, who is my uh, piercing apprentice. Cool. All right, listen, we were going to get into Thailand and talk about your the, the, uh, the Thailand, the three week adventure in Thailand, but we're going to do that another time. I found out so much information, more information about you. You're a new friend. You're a good guy. Uh, I, I found out fascinating things about you and sharing that with our listenerships. Thank you, Jeremy Tinson, for coming in. We're about out of time. So uh, you'll see me in a couple of weeks after this bruise goes away. I'm going to get said, Shh, don't tell Gigi I'm going to have her name printed on my wrist. Uh, Stepping up. Listen, uh, everybody, you can get a hold of uh, Jeremy by go finding his business. What's the actual location? It is uh, 851 3rd Street, 85. Eight five what? Eight five one. Okay, eight five one Third Street. Yep. You can also look him up, Jerry Jensen. That's J E N S E N on Facebook. He also does uh, great. What is the name of your promotion? Music oh, Beautiful Mind Production. Beautiful Mind Productions. You can find him there. Super talented guy, right here in our midst. Uh, a giant amongst the redwoods uh, that we have. Uh, a very talented, talented man that does a lot of stuff in our community. Get to know Jerry Jensen. He's very approachable. He's a good guy. He will take uh, take the time to shake your hand and listen to what you have to say to him. 
you could often find them at Enoteca on uh, Friday nights, Saturday nights, or whenever there's a band there or another cut. And the business is right across the street, right? Essentially. Yeah, you're going from there. Yeah, we're right next to the uh, Del Mar Republican headquarters. Okay, there we go. You heard here first, folks. We are out of time. Amanda Doctor is in the studio. Uh, we have the funds. Are you going to talk about what happened this past weekend? And well, we've been talking about that a lot. I was getting angry about it. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, we, we will hear a lot from uh, Amanda over the next two hours, as, you, as she is always here every uh, two hours uh, on every Wednesday. And then she has other shows that you will find out about by going to KFUG uh, radio.org and check us out. You've been listening to Jacques Talks. I am Jacques Kepner, and you can find me on Facebook. Friend me. Reach out to me. If you have an interesting story or friend or a talent, please let me know. And maybe, just maybe, you will be on the show talking live here at Wednesdays between 1 and 2. That's a wrap, folks. You have a wonderful rest of the week. Uh, have fun. Take care. And peace and love from Fugland. Goodbye. Let's...